Have you ever recorded something using one of the MIDI effects in Logic, like the chord trigger or the transposer, but when you went into the piano roll or the event list to edit your MIDI, you saw nothing but the actual notes you played? Well, now in Logic Pro 10.7.5 or later, you can actually record those MIDI effects to your track and be able to edit the data as if you actually played those chords that chord trigger generated. And we're going to talk about how to do that as a voice of a warrior. But before that, I'd just like to welcome you back to Logic.Band. I am the Oreo Monster, and this is a place full of tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you as a blind Logic voiceover macOS and GarageBand user. If you haven't yet, visit Logic.Band, and when you land on the homepage, sign up for the mailing list so you can get a free getting started with Logic course. So to demonstrate the ability to record MIDI from plugins, we're going to be using the MIDI effects that come included with Logic. And we'll get into MIDI effects, what they do, and then what the benefit of recording their output is in a second. But first, let's set up what we need to do to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new software instrument track to this project command option S. Track 25 classic electric piano. Track 25 classic electric piano. Group. And once again, I'm going to hit shift Y to be able to search patches in the library. And you see that time it didn't move my voiceover focus, but if I veal left or right, you see I'm still in track headers, but if I start typing, y -A -M -A -Yana. it is typing in the search field in the library. So this is one of those situations where we're going to want to use VO shift F4 to move the voiceover focus to the keyboard focus. Yana. Insertion at end of text search text field. All right, so there I am. Um, voiceover is now focused in the text field for searching patches in the library where the keyboard was. So now if I be all right, search results list shows patches or plugin presets with names that contain the search text table, no selection. I'll see the search patches list. So if I interact with this, Yamaha Grand Hall, sell. I can go through these different patches. So remember, I typed YMA because I was looking for one of the Yamaha pianos. Yamaha, Yamaha Grand Piano, sell. Y y Yamaha Piano Club. So if I just VO down arrow, which is what I'm doing, I can go through these different search results. Y y Yamaha Piano Hall. Y y Yamaha Piano Room. Y Yamaha Piano Studio. Yamaha Piano Studio. And we'll go to the Yamaha Piano Studio. So I'm going to press VOJ to jump back over to the track headers again. In table, row 1 of 19, in mixer, layout area, in tracks, time ruler, timeline, in tracks header, group, four items, track 25, Yamaha Piano Studio, group, tracks header, group. And what I want to do is I want to use that thing I recorded for the baseline. I'm just going to copy that over to the piano track so we can use that for demonstration purposes as well. So if I VO left, track 24, Finger, library, group. You see what happens there was my focus was still in the library. So it kind of shifted me back to the library. So I'm going to use VLJ to jump back over to the track headers again. In library, browser, in table, row 1 of 19, in mixer, layout area, in tracks, time ruler, timeline, in tracks header, group, four items, track 24, finger style, electric base, group, tracks header, group. And now this time I'm going to press VO command F4 to move my keyboard focus to where voiceover is. So VO command F4. Track 24, finger style, electric base, group. And you see we're on the figure style electric bass track. So, like I said, I wanted to copy the region I have on this track. Eight bars, four beats, four hundred, one bar, one beat, one check. I'm gonna copy that over to track twenty-five Yamaha Piano Studio Group. Yamaha Piano Studios track here. So I'm just gonna press Command V to paste. Eight bars, paste. One bar, one beat, one check. All right. So we got that pasted there, and I'm gonna just use Option Shift Up Arrow transpose that up an octave, and if I solo this. Toggle channel strip. we see we have this piano playing just the notes. So let's talk about the MIDI effects. MIDI effects are plugins that allow you to modify or affect the MIDI data that you are playing. So if we jump into the mixer where we normally go to add effects, I'm going to press command two to open the mixer in its own window. Now in Logic Pro 1075 Logics, Logic Pro 1075, Mixer, Tracks, Window, Yamaha Piano Studio, Partially Hidden, Channel Strip Group. We're on the Yamaha Studio Channel Strip here in the mixer. And you notice it says partially hidden. Whenever it says partially hidden, you may want to go ahead and full screen that mixer window with command control F because it may not read some stuff correctly. So let's interact with this. In Yamaha Piano Studio, partially hidden, channel strip group, 29 items, Yamaha Piano Studio, name, text. And I'm going to press VO home to jump to the top of this channel strip. Setting button. And VO right. Game reduction meter on, zero to off, EQ button, MIDI plugin button. You see right there it says MIDI plugin. Input group. And it says input. That's where it should show us what instrument we're using for this. But because it says input, it's not showing us the actual instrument. So if we press command control F, 
Space with Logic Pro containing Windows Logic Pro 1075 Logics. Logic Pro 1075. Mixer. Tracks. Full screen space. You see the mixer is now full screen. I'm going to VO left and then VO right back. Mini plugin. Button. Sampler. Group. But you see our instrument is a sampler. And if I VO left from where it shows us the instrument name or it says input. Mini plugin. Button. You see it says MIDI plugin. So this is where we can add MIDI plugins to the track to affect the MIDI data that is being played or that is already on the track. So if I VO space on this. Menu. 11 items check mark. No plugin. Arpeggiator. Chord trigger. Let's go for the chord trigger. So I'm going to VO space on that. Chord trigger. Check. Yamaha Piano Studio. Di Yamaha Piano Studio. Dialog. And now what the chord trigger does is it enables you to trigger chords even though you may only be playing a single key on the keyboard. So case in point, if you have it set to major and you just pressed a C key on the keyboard, it will trigger a C major chord, for example. So let's go ahead and pick a preset here. Toolbar, button, bypass, check, check factory default, pop up button. So I'm going to go ahead and, and dig through some of these presets and find something I like, and then we'll pick up once I have a preset selected. All right, so I just selected the perfect fifth preset. So this basically is going to give you a root and fifth, a power chord, as us guitar players know them. So... Now that I have this chord trigger on the track and I have it set to a perfect fifth, if I play, you'll hear now that instead of hearing a single note, you're hearing chords. All right, so let's go ahead and close that. Now yet, Yamaha Piano Studio, name, text. So it puts us at the end of the channel strip. So let's press VO Home to jump to the top of the channel strip again. Yamaha Piano Studio, button. And VO right. Game reduction meter on, on, EQ button, insert bar button, chord trigger group. So you see the chord trigger is there. Now if I VO right, MIDI plugin button. There is another MIDI plugin spot. So much like audio effects, we can add a, another MIDI plugin here. So this time, let's add the arpeggiator. So now that we got it triggering chords, let's go ahead and arpeggiate those chords. Menu, arpeggiator. All right, so here's the arpeggiator. Arpeggiator, check. Yamaha Piano Studio, Yamaha Piano Studio, dialog. And I'm going to go ahead once again and pick a preset. Toolbar, button, bypass, check, factory default, pop-up button. All right, so we'll pick up once I dig through this list and find a preset that I want to use. So I just selected the Roland Eighths preset. So now instead of just hearing a chord as in the root and fifth played at the same time, you're going to hear it go from root to fifth to root to fifth to root to fifth, but in eighth note increments. So if I go ahead and play this. Now, remember, I literally just played a single note. So now we're getting to sound like we're playing a chord that's being arpeggiated, even though all we ever actually played is a single note. All right, so let's go ahead and close this. Now in Logic Pro 1075 Logics. And if I go ahead and pull up the piano roll, I'm going to press Command 4. Now in Logic Pro 1075 Logics. Logic Pro 1075. Piano roll. Layout area. In piano roll. Layout area. 16 items. Noted 1 bar 1 beat 1 tick. A1. Layout item. So you see I have... Noted 1 bar 1 beat 1 tick. A1. Layout item. These notes at one bar, one beat, one tick. That's A1. Note one bar, three beats, one tick. E2. Layout item. E2. Note two bars, one beat, one tick. D2. Layout item. D2. Note two bars, three beats, one tick. E2. Layout item. So you see, it literally is just representing the one note that I played here back when I played A, E, D, E. But if I play Note two bars, one, one bar, three beats, one tick. Note one bar, one, note one bar, one beat, one tick. A1. Layout item. You see, that's not what's being represented. So the ability to record the MIDI output allows us to go ahead and have the MIDI data on a track when we record it actually reflect what we're hearing. So because we only played one note, that's all the MIDI data recorded, but the MIDI effects are then taking that one note, turning it into a chord, and then arpeggiating that chord. But when you look at the piano roll, you're only going to ever see the one note that you actually played when you recorded it. But now we can actually record the output of these effects and have the piano roll or the event list wherever we look at our MIDI data reflect the actual information that you are hearing. So I'm going to close this window. In Yamaha Piano Studio, channel strip group, 32 items. And if I go back to where the effects are, it's going to be a home to jump to the top of the channel strip. Yamaha Piano Studio, button. Be all right. Game reduction meter, on, zero to on, insert bar, button, chord trade, group. Right here where it says chord trigger, if I interact with this. In chord trade, open, button, list, button, list, button. Menu, 11 items, check mark, chord trigger. Go to that list. Now, normally this is where you go to change effects, but if I go to the bottom of this list. Modifier, modulator, no repeat, randomize, switch, trans, velocity, record, record MIDI to track here. Record a MIDI to track here. Now, if I select this. Record MIDI to track here, check. It's only going to record the MIDI 
from the chord trigger. So even though we'll still hear the arpeggiator, which comes after the chord trigger in the sequence of effects that we have here, when we look at the MIDI data, we're only going to see the data from the chord trigger, but not the data from the arpeggiator because we're recording the MIDI data after the chord trigger, but not after the arpeggiator. All right. So let's jump back into the track header. Now, Logic Pro, track 25, Yamaha Piano Studio. All right. So I'm going to delete the region that we have on this track. Solo, group, selection deleted. So once again, you see that because I deleted the selected region, VoiceOver now says selection deleted. So that's once again, one of the other new features in Logic Pro is it now speaks when you delete regions. All right. So I'm going to have this thing count me in and we're going to record on this track and you'll see that now the recording reflects the chord trigger effect but not the arpeggiator when we look at it in the piano roll so i'm going to go ahead and hit r for record so got that recorded and we can still quantize that quantize selected regions, events. All right, so now let's jump into the piano roll again. So command four. Now in Logic Pro 1075 Logics. Logic Pro 1075. Piano roll. Piano roll. Layout area. Piano roll. Layout area. And let's interact with that layout. In piano roll. Layout area. Noted one bar one beat one check. A one. Layout item. So you see we got the A one there. Noted one bar one beat one check. E two. Layout item. E two. So you see, remember when we didn't have the arpeggiator on, it was making it look like a chord. So it sounded like we played the A and E at the same time. Noted one bar three beats one check. E two. Layout item. Noted one bar three beats one check. B two. Layout item. And the E and B at the same time, which is why they're both at one bar three beats. And if I keep going, no two bars one beat one check. D two layout item. No two bars one beat one check. A two layout item. You see that those two rep represent as if we played a chord again, a root and fifth, a power chord, again. But now I'm going to close this. Tracks group logic. And this time we're going to record the MIDI data after the arpeggiator. I'm going to delete that. Selection deleted. So I just deleted that region. So we have a blank track again to record on. But before we do that, let's jump back into the mixer and set it to record after the arpeggiator. So I'm going to press command two to go to mixer. Now in Logic Pro 1075, mixer, tracks, window, Yamaha Piano Studio, channel strip group. And interact. In Yamaha Piano Studio, channel strip. And view home to jump to the top of the channel strip. Yamaha Piano Studio, button, game reduction meter, on, zero decibels, switch, on, EQ, insert bar, button, chord trade, group. View right over here. And you see chord trigger, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back before the chord trigger. So I'm going to VO left. Insert bar button. And right here, I'm going to go ahead and add the transposer. So now, in addition to all of this, it's going to transpose it down a whole step. That's what I'm going to set it to do. So I'm going to VO space on this. Menu, arpeggiator, chord trigger, modifier, modulator, no repeater, randomizer, switcher, transposer. Let's add the transposer. Transposer, check. Yamaha Piano Studio. Yamaha Piano Studio. Dialog. And I'm gonna jump over to where I can edit the parameter. Table. Transpose zero semi slide in table. Transpose zero in zero semi slider in slider. And take this minus ten semi down. minus twenty semi Oops. minus ten zero semi minus one semi minus two semi. And take that down two semitones, so a whole step lower. So anything I play will be a whole step lower. I'm still gonna play the same notes A E D E, but you should hear G D C D when you hear me actually play it. So let's go ahead and close that. Now Yamaha Piano Studio. Jump to the top of this channel strip again. Yamaha Piano Studio button. Game reduction meter on. Yamaha Piano Studio button. And VO right. Game reduction meter on. EQ insert bar button. Transposer group. So you see right there we have the transposer. Insert bar button. Chord trigger group. Then the chord trigger. Insert bar button. Art group. And then the arpeggiator. So if I set it to record after the arpeggiator, we're gonna get the transpose, the chord trigger, and and the arpeggiator reflected when we look at the MIDI data in the piano roll. So let's interact with this. Mark, open button, list button. Go over to the list. Menu, 11 items check mark, arpeggiator. And now we're going to go to the bottom of this list so we can select record MIDI data here. Chord trigger, modifier, module, no, random, switcher, trans, plus, record, record, record MIDI track here. Record MIDI track here, check. Record MIDI to track here. So I just selected record MIDI to track here. And so now everything from all the MIDI effects are going to get recorded as part of the MIDI data because I selected record MIDI to track on the third one, which is the last one in the chain. All right, so let's jump back to the track header. So I'm going to close this. Now in Logic Pro 1000, track 25, Yamaha Piano Studio, solo, group. And once again, I'm going to press record, let it count me in, and then start playing again. Okay, 
stop that recording. And once again, we can quantize. Quantize selected regions, cells, events. And now if I jump into the piano roll, so command four. Now in tap logic row 1075, piano roll, layout area. In piano roll, note one bar one beat one check, G1, layout item. So you see now it's saying G because it's recording the transpose data. But if you look, it said G1. Note one bar one beat one check, G1, layout item. At one bar one beat one tick. Note one bar one beat 481 ticks, D2, layout item. One bar one beat 481 tick, which would be an eighth note. That's where the fifth falls. So instead of it being both at bar one beat one, the root is on bar one beat one. The fifth is on the eighth note. Note one bar two beats one tick. G one layout item. One bar two beats one tick. G one again. Note one bar two beats four hundred eighty one ticks. D two layout item. And one bar two beats four hundred eighty one ticks is where you'll find the fifth. So you see, he's putting everything a uh, eighth note apart because now it's also recording the data from the arpeggiator as well. So that's it. You can now record the output of your MIDI. So if you use MIDI effects or if you use any other third party plugins that output MIDI data, instead of your regions looking only like what was recorded when you actually played the keys, as opposed to any effect that the MIDI effects or the plugin is having on your MIDI data, you can now have the regions when you open them up in the event list or the piano roll reflect exactly how it sounds to you so that is record the output of midi to the tracks so what do you think of the ability to record midi from plugins is this something you think you'll use let me know in the comments if you love content like this go ahead and give this a like and share it with someone that you think will get some value out of it as well don't forget to subscribe to the youtube channel and join the mailing list found at logic.band that way you can get a free getting started with logic course and i can keep you updated whenever there is a new version of the logic keyboard ninja key commands if you want to grab the latest version that now works with logic pro 10.7.5 there's a link to that in the description below if you want to support what's going on over here at logic.band then visit logic.band support where you can make a one-time or ongoing patreon style donation if you want to go deeper on any of the topics we covered today or anything relating to logic voiceover mac os or GarageBand, then visit logic.band training links to all of these blog posts and supplemental information can be found in the description below and as always until next time happy recording